Lewis, we have a forecast of possible thunderstorms. We've had plenty of them so far today. And this good matchup of the Texas Rangers and the St. Louis Cardinals, the opening pitch, brought to you by Budweiser. From May to July, buying Budweiser benefits military families. Shelby Miller, the right-hander, is getting set to go, and he brings with him a record of 8-4, and four, an ERA of 2.08. That is the fourth best earned run average in baseball. It is his rookie season. He came up at the end of last year, and here is Tim's scouting report. Uh, primarily a high ball pitcher. He's working on that two seam fastball in double play situation. And a lot has been said, Joe, about how Shelby Miller uh, should have an economy of his pitches that is not a problem. Uh, so says Shelby. I think uh, uh, those that talk about that should drop the subject, and we'll talk more about it over the next nine innings. Right now, we'll give you the starting lineup for the Rangers, brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you've got to live Moss. Ian Kinsler leads off at second base. Elvis Andrews bats second at short. Nelson Cruz is in right. Adrian Beltre cleans up. A.J. Pruszynski does the catching. Mitch Moreland is back and at first base. David Murphy is in left. Leonis Martin is in center. And Martin Perez, the left-hander and the rookie, will make the start tonight. And what that does is push Nick Tepish to tomorrow night's matchup against Adam Wainwright. Just over an hour for the delay. About an hour, five or six minutes. And so these players starting a little bit after 7 o'clock, this is when their body clock is ready to go anyway. First pitch is up and in, and we're underway on a Saturday night. Kinsler, Elvis Andrews, and then Nelson Cruz for the Rangers, who are hot. That is ripped foul. A ball and a strike. Speaking of body clocks, it's hard to believe that Ian Kinsler is 31 years old today. The former University of Missouri product, he has had some career. And the Rangers really missed him when he was on the DL. Had a rib injury. He is a week back in the lineup. Came back last Sunday. There's a breaking ball from Miller in the count one and two. This team, the Rangers, are 30 and 16 when he makes a start. They don't have him four games under the 500 mark as this one is fouled out of playoff to the right. The count's still one and two. So there's a foul ball, which leads somewhat into your point about pitch count which drives you nuts with these younger pitchers and everybody worried about Shelby Miller who usually is around 80 pitches through five innings he gets a strikeout and that's how his night begins one away here in the first inning in that at bat you saw while pitch counts are not important for a guy who throws as hard as Shelby Miller Foul balls and strikeouts. It takes at least three pitches to strike somebody out. Right. And more often than not, it takes more than that. That's right. You know, so if you're going to be effective and throw that hard and up in the strike zone, for the most part, you're going to throw a lot of pitches. And it's much ado about nothing with Cardinal fans or anybody else who's worried about Shelby Miller. This one runs inside on Andrews. Ball one, 93 miles per hour from a guy who is number four on the all-time list for strikeout percentage in a rookie season. He's striking out, if you want to round up, 29% of the hitters that he is facing. And as Tim said, when you rack up those kind of strikeout totals, you're going to rack up high pitch counts. That's just the way he works. Here's a 1-1 pitch. That's in the center, sending Robinson back. And Shane, well, you see John Jay out there, but Shane Robinson tonight. He's got Holiday to his right, Beltron to his left. Freeze, Cosma, Carpenter, Craig on the infield. The catcher is the best in the game, Yadier Molina. And he is guiding this young right-hander through this game tonight. Here's Nelson Cruz. Strike one. Nelson has found his name on this lineup card for manager Ron Washington in the number three spot. That's just taken place this week. He hadn't hit in the third position since 2010. He's in the hole here 0-2. And, 
a late swing that keeps it 0 and 2 and his manager Washington told us before the game I was so worried about protecting Beltre that I wasn't hitting Cruz where he probably fit best in our lineup which is right here batting third when you think about it he could hit third fourth or fifth and still be effective he strikes out and it's a quick and easy inning to start the night for Shelby Miller he waited over an hour for that first pitch two strikeouts no score after half Running lineup for the Cardinals brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you've got to live boss. Matt Carpenter leads off at second. Carlos Beltran bats second at Matt Holliday. Alan Craig, Yadier Molina, David Fries, Shane Robinson hitting the number seven spot. Then Pete Cosma, the shortstop, Shelby Miller has a home run this season. That's ninth, obviously. And here is Martin Perez making his second start. Of this season just called up and here he is on a Saturday night. This is one of the cutest scouting reports we've had. Why? Because A.J. Brzezinski said I've never caught the guy so I don't know anything about him. I don't know any more than you do so I'll find out with you. He broke his arm in spring training. That's why A.J. didn't catch him and good numbers in the minor leagues. He was five and one. Here's Carpenter. He takes a strike. The Rangers really need Martin Perez right now. Oh, yeah. They need him to continue doing what he was doing at Triple A, where he was 4 0 with an ERA just over one. And you can see he's got good stuff. He's got a good live fastball, mid 90s there, and it's quickly 0 2. Talking to Mike Maddox, the pitching coach for the Rangers, he said, with Perez, you don't worry about his arm. But you do worry about him getting too excited. He's really got to relax. Able to relax to make the catch here is Murphy out and left one out. We'll give you the Ford keys to the game for this June 22nd affair between Texas and St. Louis. We talked about people who thought the Texas Rangers were the best team in baseball back in April and early May. Well, they went into a slump, but they've won four of their last five games, and the Cardinals want to keep that consistency that they've maintained since the beginning of the year. Well, they don't have Colby Lewis in their rotation. They don't have Matt Harrison, and they don't have Alexi Ogando. Three guys that they were hoping to have at the beginning of the season, and really the closest guy is Joaquin Soria. And he's a guy they gave a two year deal to to help their bullpen. Here's a base hit into center off the bat of Beltron. And we have our first base runner of the night. The Rangers went in order in their half. The first Beltron's on with one out here in the bottom half. And with the injuries and the guys they called up, the three young arms, 
really pitched well early. That's why through May 19th they had the best record in baseball. And they were rolling. They built up a seven game lead in the AL West. Under 500 since May 20th at 13 and 17. That's the fourth worst record in Major League Baseball. And they just came out of a stretch where they lost six straight. And scored just eight runs during that losing streak. And it's been a key week uh, for the Rangers. They beat the Oakland Athletics, the first place team in the American League West. Three out of four games. A big game on Thursday afternoon. And then they came here last night. Got a big hit from Nelson Cruz in the ninth inning and beat the Cardinals 6 4. So they have won four of five. Martin Perez got a swinging strike on Matt Holiday. Holiday hitting 275. 11 home runs, 40 RBIs. One on, one out, and strike two on Holiday. Matt's been heating up. And the rest of the National League thinking, yeah, that's all they need is yeah, to get Matt right. Holiday rolling with the way they're producing with Carpenter, Beltron, Craig, who's an RBI machine. Yadier Molina's leading the league in hitting. Freeze is red hot. Here's the 0 2 in the dirt. AJ Pruszynski, we were visiting with him before the game, and he said, You know, I didn't realize how good these guys were going. Mm. But he sits back there in his crouch, and he's looking up at the stats with the rest of us here in the park on the scoreboard. He said, Every one of them's got 50 RBIs, and this is a Cardinal team that's been scoring a lot of runs to back up very good pitching. 25th in the major leagues in home runs, 25th of the 30 teams. And yet they continue to get one big hit after another. A check on the runner Beltran, who has stolen just one. Battling knee injuries the last few years does not run like he once did. Who does? I'll say the same thing. Here is Beltran, one of the best, maybe ever. Making that play on the chopper and Adrian Beltre takes care of Holiday. Two out. Defensive alignment for Texas is brought to you by Scott's official lawn care company of Major League Baseball. Murphy in left, Martin in center, Cruz in right. Beltre at third. Very good defensive left side of this infield with Andrews at short. Kinsler at second, Mitch Moreland. They're happy to have him back at first. Perez in the middle of it all, throwing to A.J. Pruszynski. With two out. A runner at second, the batter will be Alan Craig. And here's where Alan Craig lights up. A 446 average this season with runners in scoring position, and even better with men in scoring position and two out. Ball one inside. At a very early age, he is building a reputation of being one of the best clutch hitters. In the National League. And the irony of it is, he is in essence in this Cardinal lineup taking the spot of one of the best ever in the clutch department, Albert Pujols. Batting in the cleanup position, Pujols hit third. They play first, both of them. Craig spends some time in the outfield when the Cardinals try to get Matt Adams into their lineup at first base. The count evens at a ball and a strike. Outfield shaded around toward right field for Craig. He has excellent power, as does David Freeze, the third baseman. One of the sidelines of these Cardinal hitters, they're tough to defend against. They use all parts of the field in which to hit. Perez is ready with a 1 1 pitch. Runner at second, two up. Into center field, a base hit. Beltron coming to the plate. Martin's throw. He's got a great arm. Not in time. 1 0 St. Louis in the first. Cardinal fans here in St. Louis are getting used to this. Another base hit with two outs and a runner in scoring position by Alan Craig. But you're right about Leonis Martin, the center fielder. Five assists on the season. Three from center, one from left, one from right. 
but he just misses Matt Carpenter. I beg your pardon, Carlos Beltran. And it's one nothing St. Louis. And now Alan Craig runs the bases, and the batter is Molina, who is leading the league in hitting. And a foul straight back. Just to go back to Alan Craig, among current National Leaguers, only Ryan Howard is driven and runs at a higher rate and has Alan Craig over his career. Now, obviously, Howard's played a long time, and Craig sure. is relatively new right. to the scene, but he has an RBI every 5.13 at-bats. He just has a knack for driving and runs. That's a strike, and the count of ball and a strike. Did you ever think this deep into a season we would be saying that Yadier Molina was leading the league in hitting no a guy who had a 230 average his first three years with the Cardinals everybody talked about his defense Molina felt shy about talking about his offense he didn't want to talk about it he has worked I think more than anything else and, and the one thing about catchers and working on offense, they don't have as much time as other guys do. Because when catchers work uh, with other players, they work with their pitching staff. That's their first responsibility. That's why so few catchers have led their respective leagues in hitting. Here's a one two from Perez and Molina, who has obviously, if you're hitting 364, you developed into a tough out. But he's hitting pitchers pitches now. Yeah, right. He's That's hitting, a big difference. He's hitting pitches that guys are giving him, and they're not upset with where the ball's ending up around the plate. He did that to end with Jackson a couple of nights ago against the Cubs. That ball about eight inches off the ground, down and in to Molina, a two-run homer and a big one against the Cubs. Out in front here, and he pops it up. Foul back and out of play. But yeah, those stats, I mean, you talked about it. Molina, five time Gold Glove Award winner, hit 216 in 2006 when the Cardinals won it all. And it was at that time that his then manager, Tony La Russa, said, I don't care if Yadier Molina hits zero. Oh, for the season. Oh, for the season at the plate. <laughs> He's going to catch every day and we'll win with him catching. That's how good he is. Behind home plate. And he proved that uh, when the Cardinals won in 2006. Him hitting 216. Right on cue. He strikes out. And a bad ball down and away. The Cardinals strike first on a Saturday night. Alan Craig brings home Carlos Beltran. 1 0 after 1 in downtown St. Louis.
second. Unbelievable. David Fries became a hero in his hometown with that postseason. He was the NLCS MVP against Milwaukee and then backed it up by winning. I can't say single-handedly, but pretty darn close. Game six of the World Series. The Cardinals won game seven. That game six, Rangers fans are cursing me right now because I'm talking about it. But it's the Rangers and the Cardinals back on Fox in St. Louis. What do you expect? There's a strike to Adrian Beltre. And we're underway in the second with the Cardinals on top, one to nothing. The Rangers were a strike away and out away from the first championship in franchise history twice. And could not close it out. In the ninth inning, and the 10th inning. And Berkman then the David Freeze the and then the David Freeze home run in the 11th. Josh Hamilton hit his first home run in the postseason in 2011 a two run shot and everybody in the country I'll guarantee you, including us thought this series is history. Everybody but the Cardinals. I've literally watched the replay of that game twice. And we were sitting here, and I still don't believe that the Cardinals come back and win game six. I know. I know. Let alone even getting into the playoffs that the, year. Yep. Here's one into left center field. Well hit. Back Robinson at the wall and off the wall for Beltre, who is battling a bad hamstring. And he just gets into second with a double. Yeah, the one thing that a bad hamstring can cause it can cause a base runner to be reluctant to slide because the hamstring would either pull more or it hurts and that reluctant reluctance to slide almost nailed Beltre at second base Carpenter with a quick tag but Adrian in there and now AJ Pierzynski who is in the mold of Major League Baseball player and certainly no longer in the mode at least at the moment of contributing analyst to Fox Sports. He has left us in the dust. Here's a shot into right back at the wall and the Rangers lead it two to one. And the former broadcaster current <laughs> catcher for the Rangers has made Ron Washington clap and put Texas on top two to one. Ron Washington does not hide his emotions as we saw in the 2011 World Series dancing up and down in the dugout something we tagged as the wash and he's got reason to wash right now. that is the seventh home run hit this season against Shelby Miller and this was a laser AJ Pruszynski an experienced hitter going up looking for a fastball to drive got it two to one Rangers. So a no doubter in number seven on the year given up number seven hit by A.J. Pruszynski in his first year with the Rangers. And he has really impressed his manager Ron Washington not just with what he's done at the plate but the way he's handled this jumbled pitching staff the Rangers have had to work with because of injuries here in 2013 as Moreland stands in took a ball and now gets a line drive caught by Craig one out. That is three hard hit balls in this second inning after a perfect first for Shelby Miller. During the 2005 World Series, when the Houston Astros lost to the Chicago White Sox, A.J. Pruszynski was the catcher. And Ozzie Guillen told us that, you know, if I were a manager against A.J. Pruszynski, I wouldn't like him. But he loved him on his club. Here's a base hit into center. And Shelby Miller's not fooling anybody here in the second. Murphy is on with one out. Today's telecast is sponsored by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost, fuel economy, and a whole lot more. And by Taco Bell, sometimes you've got to live boss. One on, one out. Two runs home on the shot by Pierzynski. There's AJ, and he's worked with us the last couple of postseasons. We have had just a blast with him. Oh, yeah. More fun. And as Ron Washington said, to back up what 
Ozzie Guillen said. He talks a lot of trash. He receives a lot of it too, and he just keeps coming at you. And he can really play. Ball one inside to Martin. Leonis Martin is. Krasinski talks it over with Dave Maggot and his hitting coach. Trading trash. <laughs> Here is a swing and a miss by Martin. One ball, one strike. Leonis has kind of taken over center field. He was in a part time situation with Gentry. But it is Martin's job right now, and he is hitting 278, three homers, 12 RBIs. David Murphy on it first with one out and a 1 1. That one drops in for strike two. After Martin, it's Martin Perez. The pitcher tonight for the Rangers, and he looks like he's got good stuff. See why they're excited to have him back. Ball and two strikes. As Martin just got a piece to stay alive. Well, Lena couldn't hold on. Ball wiggling out of the web. David Murphy is on. He'd been hitting just 197 in June. 220 overall. Trying to find that stroke he had last year when he hit over 300. Pretty good rip by Martin, and the count still one and two. Packed house here in St. Louis, and these Cardinals and any team that visits, they get used to that. And this crowd with a terrific reception for my broadcast partner Tim McCarver before tonight's game. Very touching and very nice. Thank you. We're honored on the field. And that was great. We'll show video of that. And you got your number 15 jersey with this this new alternate jersey look the Cardinals are sporting in 2013. Martin hits it off the end of the bat into center to Shane Robinson. Two out. Here you go before the game here tonight. Bill DeWitt. Bill DeWitt uh, Jr. to my right and your left. And then his son, who is the president of the Cardinals. What a nice touch. I'm very proud of that shirt that I wore for 13 years with this team. And two time world champion. Also won the pennant in 68, but the rest of the story wasn't so good. No, not when Detroit came back and won the last three games. Something that Mike Shannon, the radio voice of the Cardinals for 40 years, and I will always remember. Not good memories there. They honored Tim because this is his last regular season visit in his current role. There's so many different <laughs> qualifiers to that sentence. It's not like you're going to vanish off the face of the earth. It's, it's, yeah, it's even confusing to me now. Right. <laughs> he could be back here in the postseason. Who knows? <laughs> There's strike two. As Martin Perez. Tell us all you know about Martin Perez as a hitter. <laughs> well, I'll, we'll I'll, learn with you. I'll take uh, AJ's line. Uh, he swings through a lot of ball. <laughs> he was overmatched. <laughs> But A.J. Pierzynski wasn't. Look at that. Full extension. That's what happens when you work at Fox. Get McCarver in that jersey. He'll go deep, too. Two to one.
Hardware is sponsored by Bud Light, Lime, Lime Arita, and introducing new Straw Burita. Like a margarita in a can. Lime Arita. This guy, I mean, he's throwing what? Eight pitches, but I, I like what I see from Martin uh, yeah, Perez. Too. I like the way he goes in and out, in and out. Good change of speeds. Here's a 1 0. And as importantly, what Mike Maddox said uh, about really, there's nothing wrong with the arm, nothing wrong with his delivery, but uh, the mental side of it, and can he keep cool under pressure? That's the problem for a lot of young pitchers, of course. Count's gone to 3 0. Well, here he is, Rangers fans. The guy who broke your hearts. Not him. Strike one. David Fries, who grew up in the St. Louis area and provided any baseball fan with one of the most thrilling moments a World Series game can offer. That's it, a right center field back at the wall. It is off the wall. Martin can't corral it. And David Freeze is going to end up at third base, standing there with a triple. He missed a game tying home run by about three feet, it looked like. It's only his second triple since that triple over the head of Nelson Cruz. Jumping is Leonis Martin, and the ball hit his leg and kind of caroms toward right center field. Right there, hit his hand. And Nelson Cruz, who is backing up the play, can't make the play, and instead of a double, Freeze has a triple. Even with David Freeze's speed, there would have been half a chance for him to circle the bases. He was watching, not really busting it out of the box as Robinson is going to tie this game and back is Cruz to make the catch doesn't matter in the end and David Freeze will score he missed a home run by less than a foot it turns into a triple and Freeze scores on the sack fly to right by Shane Robinson Cosma will dig in and David Freeze scores the game tying run. We're 2 2 in the second. Cosma hitting 256. He's actually been a good run producer in the bottom of this Cardinal lineup. Very good with runners in scoring position since getting the call up late last year, and it's his job now. The guy who currently wears number 15 for the Cardinals, as opposed to the guy sitting next to me that wore 15 for the Cardinals in the 60s, Rafael Fercal, had Tommy John surgery and is hopeful to play next season. But that may be a long shot. This one's inside the count two and one. Yeah, Joe, a lot of baseball fans not may not realize how difficult it is for an eighth place hitter in the National League to hit. Because you always had the pitcher hitting behind you unless there's a double switch. And you don't know when that time is going to be where they're going to pitch around you and force you to hit balls. That's the biggest reason it's tougher to hit in the eight hole in the National League than the American League where they had the DH. Here's a 3 1. Shattered bat. One hopper to Kinsler. And that's out number two. While, while we're on this and David Freeze hitting that triple, it's appropriate. Nelson Cruz in 2011 was in a no doubles defense, which means the outfielder is trying not to let a ball hit between him and the fence. Last night, had David Murphy not been in a no doubles defense, then he doesn't make that play, and the Cardinals may still be hitting or have tied the game. But that's what a no doubles defense is. If the ball's over your head, it has to be a home run. That's the philosophy that coaches teach outfielders in the major leagues. Here's Shelby Miller, the Cardinal pitcher, took a ball outside. 
Does have a home run for his only RBI, two for 29. And the count one ball, one strike. Two out bases empty, a run is home. In a 2 2 game, second inning, Miller grounds back to Perez. And that will end the second. We're 2 2. After two. We'll come back to St. Louis after a word from your local Fox station. A new season for new memories for your chance to win a community field makeover and an all-new 2014 Impala visit ChevyBaseball.com. Seen a lot of breaking balls here early from Shelby Miller and he finds strike one on Kinsler. He struck out Kinsler in the first. Gave up a two-run home run to Pierzynski in the second. He's got Kinsler set up here at 0-2. Ian Kensler still with one of the quickest bats in the American League. He can pull anybody in baseball. Lightning fast hands. And for that reason, David Freeze backing up at third base. Here is the 0-2. Just spoiling the pitch, and that's spoils the analysis too. <laughs> we uh, it does. <laughs> How dare he? That's what Mike Matheny talked about with. Kinsler and Pierzynski in particular their ability to foul off pitches and battle during at bats the 0 2 is just outside ball one. Well, now that we're on that Shelby Miller prior to this game in 15 starts through 295 pitches that were fouled off breaking ball is hook foul. That ranks him 10th in the major leagues. Now think about it. With, with starters, they're about a hundred, about five a team, 30 teams, so 150 starters. So he's in the top 10 of people who foul off balls. And that that list is very, very interesting. And we'll read you a couple of guys who are ahead of David. That or Shelby, I beg your pardon. Outside, a check swing and the count two and two on Kinsler. More major league hitters have fouled off balls against Cliff Lee more than anybody. Chris Tillman, who's eight and two for the Orioles, Justin Verlander, John Lester, Clayton Kershaw, Matt Harvey. So those are pretty good pitchers. Here's a base hit in the center off the bat of Kinsler. 
And the leadoff man is on for Texas in this 2-2 game, and we will check in with Greg in the MLB Network studios for a game break. Joe, thank you. You know, after the pitcher Patrick Corbin broke up Mike Leach's perfect game in the sixth, Eduardo Parra, the next guy up, tees off. His seventh homer of the year gives the Diamondbacks a 2-1 lead in the eighth. Joe, Tim, Patrick Corbin trying to prove his record at 10-0. Back to you. What an unbelievable beginning to the season for Corbin. And one of the out-of-nowhere stories, at least to that degree, across the major leagues in 2013. A 10-game winner, Adam Wainwright, goes tomorrow night in the finale of this three-game set against Nick Tepish. He pitched in Missouri, in Columbia, about an hour and a half, two hours away. Jordan Zimmerman, a 10-game winner with the Washington Nationals. Here is a throw down to first, and Kinsler just got back. Molina's at his best when he throws behind a left-handed batter. But that last throw and his lightning-fast hands, strong throw and Kinsler diving back. He doesn't give you much chance to get back. Had that throw been lower, closer play. Not only does the runner have to pay attention with Molina behind the plate, but so does the first baseman. Good breaking ball from Miller in the count one and two in Elvis Andrews. Well, particularly with left-handed batters, we brought this up a couple of weeks ago because the left-hander serves as a shield to a catcher who's trying to throw to first base. So he can pick off the first baseman, too. Kinsler on with nobody out here in the third inning of a tie game. There are 22 year olds hooking up tonight. Miller and Perez. That one dips low. The count two and two. Shelby is coming off a win, but only a five inning win against the Cubs. He had to leave because of leg cramps due to dehydration. It is a much cooler night. The humidity has been brutal here this week, but the rain that came through the area really cooled things down. 70 degrees at the start of the night. Two teams used to playing with plenty of humidity. That's the third tough pickup. Good pickup by Freeze and safe at first. Nearly a double play from Freeze to Carpenter on to first, and we'll get a mild argument from Mike Matheny with first base umpire Jerry Meals. Well, you know, it's not virtuous for a runner to try to beat out an infield hit. Looked like he was out, but credit Elvis Andrus. I think it just nipped Elvis. Uh, I don't know now from that angle. But it is, it's virtuous for a guy to beat a throw to first base because you know the minute you hit it, you know you've got an offer next to your name. And and that is the one of the definitions of truly a team player for a guy to beat throws to first base on a fielder's choice. Now it's Nelson Cruz with Andrews at first, one out. When you think about these two clubs in general, I think the casual baseball fan would say, well, the Cardinals, you know, they're not hitting a ton of home runs. They have the best record in baseball. They must also use the stolen base a lot. That's not the case at all, and yet it's Ron Washington's Texas Rangers club that's stolen 46 bases the Cardinals have stolen 18 all year here's one down the right field line into the corner it is gone home run Nelson Cruz and it's 4-2 Texas here in the third Cruz showing his strength down the right field line into that corner and he may not Exit that number three spot in this lineup anytime soon. 19th home run of the year. Nelson probably thinking, well, you're talking about that triple that got over my head. I'll hit one in that general vicinity to put the Rangers on top. Tremendous power the other way. And the former MVP of the 2010 American League Championship Series gives the Rangers the lead. Dangerous hitter. Dangerous hitter. 
And for the Rangers, a dangerous situation as Nelson Cruz is one of the names that's been mentioned with that whole biogenesis investigation. Nobody knows where that's going to end up. There's going to be so much that's going to transpire with regard to what Major League Baseball is going to do, whatever the response will be from the Players Association. Maybe even individually. Here's a swing and a miss by Beltre. Now he's in the hole one and two. Ken Rosenthal is with us, and Ken, that he's their biggest run producer. And uh, who knows where this biogenesis scandal is going to end up? Right, Joe. There is some sentiment among the players that baseball wants to announce some suspensions right after the All-Star game, but that probably is an aggressive timetable. And even after the suspensions are announced probably be a month and a half at least before the appeals process goes to the distance. So really, this might not happen this season, but as you said, we really don't know where this is going, and a lot of things are possible right now. Yeah, and how far-reaching it's going to be, and how many names are truly on the list. You've heard nine, you've heard 20, you've heard 90 guys in the minor leagues. As A.J. Krasinski, who homered his first time up, Digs his way in and takes high for ball one. Yeah, it's that angry cloud hanging over baseball. For the Rangers, Nelson Cruz, not a guy they can afford to lose in this lineup. You know, you talk about 2011 and these two teams meeting in the World Series. These clubs are so different personnel-wise since that October. Totally. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Pierzynski. That's strike two. Even the manager of the Cardinals. La Russa then. Yeah. Tony La Russa's last year. He retired after 2010. Mike Matheny, the 49th Cardinal manager in his second year, and he has been splendid. Yeah, and you think about the Rangers in particular. No Mike Napoli. He was as valuable as anybody in that entire postseason. Right. Obviously, Josh Hamilton, Michael Young. Here's one into right center. No C.J. Wilson off the bat of Pierzynski, but damage done in the third inning. A two-run shot by Nelson Cruz down the right field line. It looked and sounded like that. Molina knew it. So did Shelby Miller. 4-2 Texas after two and a half. Top of the order for the Cardinals in the third inning as they trail 4-2. Martin Perez 
Find strike number one. It'll be Carpenter, then Carlos Beltran, then Holiday. If anybody gets on, Alan Craig. That's a line drive, base in the center. As that ball shot through the infield, and Carpenter's one for two on the night. Manager for the Rangers, Ron Washington. We talked to him during the break, and the first was about Martin Perez and his electric stuff. He's looked good so far tonight. Well, I do. I, I really do. He's keeping the ball down. He's trying to change speeds, and more than anything else, you know, he's showing some presence out there. Uh, Ron, you know, that last inning is very interesting because Elvis Andrus beat that play at first base. Had he not beaten that play, the inning could have turned out differently, and the two-run home run could have been a solo shot, or you never know if Nelson Cruz is going to get a, a pitch like that. Well, you, you're right there, you know, and um, you can't beat hustle. And, um, you know, Elvis always hustles, and just as he did last night, he did it today and kept the inning alive. And as, as long as you can keep innings alive, you always end up getting your best hitters up there. And, you know, it worked out for us that Cruz got up there. And I know the answer to this question before I ask it, but uh, your number three hitter is working out pretty well for you right now. He, I, I have a feeling that's going to be the first name you write on your lineup card when you come to the park tomorrow. Well, I tell you, he's certainly been getting us some big hits, and um, I just want him to continue. I know you do. Ron, thanks. Thank you. All right. That's right. In his seventh year as manager, the Texas Rangers won back-to-back -back pennants in 2010-2011. After Beltron fly to center, the batter is Matt Holliday. And Ron Washington, one of our favorite managers to talk to. And we get a chance to visit with him in his office prior to the game. And uh, he keeps things pretty simple. He just he really does. He, I think he keeps it simple for us, and it, you get the feeling as Holiday grounds a double play ball to Beltre. Out at second, out at first. He keeps it pretty simple for these players of the Texas Rangers. You can't beat hustle. You just go out there and play ball. 4-2 Texas after three in St. Louis. Back to Baseball Night in America, presented by Ace Hardware. Fourth inning rolls in. It's a 4-2 Texas lead. Back to work is Shelby Miller. It'll be Mitch Moreland, David Murphy, and Leonis Martin for the Rangers, who have had a pair of two-run home runs. One by Przinski in the second, the other by Nelson Cruz in the third. Fourth. First pitch is a strike. 93 mile an hour fastball from Shelby Miller, who is from Texas. 
Ken Rosenthal is with us. And he will detail for you as only Ken can. Now Shelby Miller got away from the Texas Rangers in the draft back in 2009. After Mitch Moreland does something to start this fourth. Set up at 0 and 2. Moreland was starting to get hot before he pulled his hamstring. Went on the DL. Quick rehab, and now he's back. And if you think about the first base position for the Texas Rangers in their recent history, they've got Moreland there. But they've had some big guys in their organization at that position. None bigger than Chris Davis, who has had this breakout season for the Baltimore Orioles and leads baseball in home runs. But Pat Teixeira there. Even Adrian Gonzalez, but they are with Mitch Moreland and they really need him to show more of what he was showing before he got hurt. That makes it two and two. Mitch Moreland's one of the few guys who can match gold gloves with Mark Teixeira. He's as good a left handed throwing first baseman as Teixeira is a right handed thrower. And he made a play last night that was just sensational. There's strike three as Miller snuck a fastball in there, one out. Strikeout number four. Ken Rosenthal, how the heck did Shelby Miller not end up a Texas Ranger? Well, Joe, the Rangers did have a special insight into Miller. He played for their Area Code Games team in 2008. One of their scouts was his manager. But in the 2009 draft, picking 14th, they took another pitcher named Matt Perk. Turns out they didn't even sign Perk. Miller goes to the Cardinals at number 19. And what's really interesting is that Shelby told us yesterday that he had a pre-draft deal arranged with the Astros to go at number 21, but the Cardinals grabbed him first with the scouting director, Jeff Luno, who, of course, is now at the Astros, and what might have been for Luno if he had not taken Shelby Miller in Houston. Yeah, that's, that's so ironic that the organization that he watched growing up in that area in Texas, and you can see more hear about Shelby Miller through three consecutive no hitters during the Texas State High School playoffs. Think about he, that folks three consecutive no hitters. You might think that's a record. It's not. How can that not be a record? I, I said the same thing. Wayne Fiddleman our numbers guy said that there were two other instances where a high school pitcher won Six consecutive no hitters in 1961, 1989. That's staggering to me. David Murphy lined out to left. Leonis Martin has an infield hit as Shelby Miller thought better of trying to make some crazy throw. And the former All State punter at Brownwood High School has to work to Martin Perez's counterpart tonight with two out. Here is an 0-1 pitch. And you could say it again. Martin Perez is overmatched. You can see that last line. He had signed a letter of intent to play at Texas A&M before being drafted by the Cardinals with that 19th overall pick in 2009. That strikeout is number five for the Cardinal rookie right-hander, but he's on the short end. A 4 2 game. Some of the images from tonight already. It's been fun. Bottom of the fourth rolls in. Craig Molina, freeze coming up for the Cardinals. Down by two.
two game. Cardinals coming up. They're big bats. Alan Craig, Yadier Molina leading the league in hitting, and David Freeze. Joined by Adam Wainwright down in the corner of the Cardinal dugout. Old 6'7", 235-pound right-hander Adam Wainwright who gets the ball tomorrow night. He thought he was going to be matched up against you, Darvish, but instead it's Nick Tepish. And uh, what are you thinking on a Saturday night prior to your Sunday night start? Well, thanks for having me. I think sometimes the most dangerous thing is to think, uh, oh, man, I, I get to miss you, and then you – you don't give the, the pitcher that takes his spot enough credit. So I looked at the at, at uh, Tepish's stuff. He's got some very nice stuff. He throws hard and he's got all the kind of pitches. So, um, you know, I've got my work cut out for me for sure. That's because you like to hit. Here's a 1-1 pitch. That's why you're watching video of Tepish. You you you, you take pride in your hitting. I, I like that. to know what's going on. I like to know. Um, you know, we, we see these two clubs getting together and all these great memories in St. Louis and the heartbreak for Texas, but you weren't a part of it because you were rehabbing from Tommy John surgery. I know you were a part of it in one way, but not the way you would have liked. I was definitely a part of it. I know you were. Uh, I'm not. I'm not short selling. But, it I, but I definitely was not a part of it as well. So I know what you're saying. You know, I, I, um, I was here in spirit and, and and to be a positive influence, but I definitely did not get to contribute any way on the field. But I was so proud of those guys, the way they competed, and they never gave up. Uh, they had their backs against the wall several times and, and, and just kept ticking. And, um, gosh, there's there's so many lessons to be learned from that, and in so many ways, it, it, it made our team so much stronger going forward. So, um, you know, we learned a lot from that experience, and we still live off those moments today. How many times have you seen that World Series from beginning to end? Or um, have you? Just the one. Say. Just the one watching it in person. Really? Uh, yeah. And, and you haven't looked back on it? No, we see some replays. Mm -hmm. You know, we see some replays. but um, Just the big moments. Just the big moments. That's right. Here's uh, Yadier Molina. The at-bat doesn't last long enough to really get into what makes Molina so good. But I, I want to – you're a thoughtful guy and somebody who I know thinks about a lot of, a lot of this stuff. And I think someday would be a good television analyst if he ever <laughs> wanted to do this – Rack it up we here. Could, but we what could it, find a channel that didn't care who they hired. Maybe. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about Molina real quick from, from your vantage point and, and why he is what he is, which is, in my estimation, the MVP in the National League. Well, there's no way to 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 put a price on how, how important he is to us. There's, there's no one thing you can point to that makes him so special. Obviously, he's got every tool he could possibly have defensively. I think what's been incredible to see – his, his maturity and his growth as a hitter. Um, he went from a, a, a good, solid hitter, a tough out, a guy that could shoot you know, singles to right on you to being a, the all-around type of hitter you see today that can drive the ball out of, out of the park to all fields and do it on all kinds of pitches. So um, I, I just think, you know, we're so proud of him, and he's so important to our team. He, he, he makes our pitchers the best they can possibly be, but he's also such a threat at the plate. He's, he's an all-around great baseball player. David Freeze likes looking out at that Rangers uniform. He has been red hot, hit 329 since the end of May coming in. He's two for two. He gets a base hit the left. You know, here you are, a kid from Georgia, live in the Sea Island area. I don't know what, what town specifically down there. St. Simons Island. St. Simons born in, Island. Born in Brunswick, Georgia, live in St. Simons Island. So you're drafted by the Atlanta Braves. You go into that organization. You're traded here. You've had all this success, and now you've been locked into this long-term contract. You know where you're going to be now for the next handful of years. That's got to be an, an amazing feeling. It is. They're stuck with me. They're stuck with me here. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I got to thinking about it. And, um, you know, you start thinking about free agency, and every – Every player, you know, if they're, if they're not lying, will tell you, you know, that lure of free agency is something that, that creeps into the back of your head. And I, I'd sat down with my family and my advisors and, and all the people that mean the most to me in life, and uh, we just, you know, we, we decided that we wouldn't rather be anywhere than, than right here. And this is the perfect baseball town for us on many levels, so there was no reason to go anywhere else. Want to know the count now, one and one on Robinson. You guys know you're good. This is a very good Cardinal team, as, as good as there has been in a long time. But you also have a lot of fun. And, and Matheny's a tough guy, but I see you guys messing around down in that dugout more than just about any team in the big leagues. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And <laughs> somebody's throwing seeds yeah, at you. Nobody likes having fun in this dugout. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, I think, I think Mike is, uh, you know, early on, he, I, he may have questioned our, our seriousness. <laughs> 
uh, when it comes to watching watching the game and paying attention and all that. But I think realize, he realized quickly that you know we're we're having a, we're having a great time on the bench, obviously, but we're also paying attention. We're we're talking baseball. We're talking shop with the guys. But uh, we keep it light. You know, we play 162 games plus another, hopefully another month in the playoffs. And uh, if you get too stiff in here, you know, it makes it a lot tougher. We've been on teams before where it was very clicky and, and uh, guys didn't really cheer for each other. And, and I think what you're looking at now is something that we've built over the years in, in, in a team that really just loves each other, loves people, loves on each other constantly, um, goes to battle for each other and, uh, and roots for each other. I mean, but we, but we, we have a good time. We do. Um, we're, we're not good dancers, but we do it all. We try. Um, we're not good at coming up with handshakes, but we have a bunch of them. Um, you know, we, we keep it light, no doubt. You may not be good dancers, uh, but you're, uh, most of you are good golfers. Any tips from Davis Love down at St. Simons? That's his home uh, course down there. It is, right? yeah. We, we're, we're blessed to have many golfers down there. Davis Love, Jonathan Bird, um, Lucas Glover, Zach Johnson, uh, Brent Schwarzrock, a lot of PGA wow. pros live down there, and um, I like to just go out there and watch them practice. You know, they they'll practice for for an hour on putting putting to one hole. Or you know, one time I played nine holes, and Jonathan Bird was hitting hitting a shot to a hundred yard green. And I played nine holes and came back around. He was still hitting the same shot to the same hundred yard green. Um, <laughs> see, I can multitask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, that's that's kind of how we. You know, as pitchers and, and, and professional athletes on any, on any level, you know, we you get out of it what you put in, and that's why they're so good. It's repeating things, isn't it? That's man? right. That's right. Hopefully, uh, Carpenter doesn't hurt his back bending down for that baseball. You just this this would out. have been really tough for me a few years ago, but I, luckily I'm I'm kind of schooled and in, in practicing doing interviews with lots of guys throwing seeds <laughs> and baseballs at me. Hey, Adam, thanks. Good luck tomorrow night, and uh, and congratulations on the deal and. Ten wins already. Good Lord, that, that's a that's a heck of a start. Thank you very much. All right, good to talk to you too, Mr. McCarver. The right, great Adam. Tim McCarver. Okay. <laughs> he called you a stud. He, he called me a stud before we went on the air. You know how long it's been before I've been called a stud? Well, I, I don't it's been a few it. years, Joe. A few decades. Two on, two out after a walk to Shane Robinson, and it sits in the lap of Pete Cosma, the Cardinal shortstop. Dying runs are on. They're at first and second. Pitcher on deck. And the 0-1 pitch from Perez is on the way. Good pitch for strike two. We talked about Cosma. He has had a knack for coming through in this spot. 362 average with runners in scoring position. In the regular season and the postseason since coming up from the minors, but here he reaches for one and just got a piece. He's in the hole 0 and 2. That was a hanger. Martin Perez uh, got away with. Ball up in the strike zone. Lead runner is Freeze. Trail runner is Robinson. Cardinal pitcher is on deck. An 0 2 count on Cosmo. Did not get all of it. Murphy coming on. He's got time and he's got the baseball into the inning. And so Perez gets around the hit and the walk with two out. Our thanks to Brian Bartow, Cardinal PR Director, Adam Wainwright for joining us as we go to the fifth. 4 2 Texas.
fifth inning on a Saturday night for two. Texas on top. Ian Kinsler first up. Elvis Andrews bat second. And then Nelson Cruz. Here is a strike from Shelby Miller. Miller struck out five. He hasn't walked anybody, but he's allowed a pair of two-run home runs. Kinsler spins out of there. He is set up at 0-2 again. He struck out his first time, battled back from an 0-2 count, got a base hit to center his next time. And now he is right back in that position at nothing and two. Line drive into left. Coming to get it is Holiday with a sliding catch. One out. So one down, and Holiday got a good jump, made a nice play. Next Saturday on Baseball Night in America, Chris Davis. And those 27 home runs at the moment, who knows how many a week from now. He and the Orioles take on Robinson Cano and the Yankees. The Reds head to Texas to take on these Rangers. Cubs, Mariners, Brewers, Pirates, or Tigers and Rays. Presented by Ace Hardware next Saturday at 7 Eastern only on Fox. How about this? This has got a eat at this Texas Rangers franchise as they send him away along with Tommy Hunter a hard throwing right hander part of a very good bullpen in Baltimore in that 2011 season for Uohara Koji Uohara who's now with Boston and really did not give the Rangers what they were banking on when they gave those two young players to get him yeah a, a guy who in large part had a lot to do with that trade was Buck Showalter, who used to manage the Texas Rangers and saw Chris Davis in high school and then traded for him later for the Orioles, and it has turned out to be a marvelous deal for Baltimore. Elvis Andrews in the hole one and two. Shelby Miller thought he had a strikeout. Instead, it was ball one. One out, nobody on. Miller brings it, and Andrews fouls it off to the right. How about that deal, Ken Rosenthal? It's looking a little lopsided at this point. It does, Joe, and that trade was one of many made by Andy McPhail, who was then the Orioles, president of baseball operations. And it was a deal that the Rangers knew at the time could come back to haunt them. I remember their GM, John Daniels, saying, hey, we know Davis could erupt, but he had gotten several chances with the Rangers. It just hadn't happened. And, hey, they've got to be satisfied, too. Mitch Moreland is developing into an excellent player. Yeah, he really is. And uh, you can see he's just got a better attack and approach at the plate. Here's Nelson Cruz. After the base hit by Elvis Andrews into center field right past the leg of Shelby Miller one on one out. In the words of Eugene Levy in the movie Splash. What a week I'm having. What a week this guy is having. Nelson Cruz he couldn't get any better. Here's a fly ball into center just got under it. And Robinson makes the catch. Andrews tags. Here comes the throw. It's over the head of Matt Carpenter. And good base running by Andrews puts him in scoring position with two out. And here's the week for Nelson Cruz. That big series against the Oakland A's on Monday he hit two home runs. Second put the Rangers ahead to stay as they took three out of four in that big series in Arlington, Texas last night. The game winning two run hit up the middle off Trevor Rosenthal in the ninth and then tonight a two run shot in the third inning down the right field line. It's been an 11 RBI week for Cruz. Here's a line drive into left hard hit off the bat of Beltre but pretty much right at Matt Holiday who went back to grab it 4 2 still halfway through it here in St. Louis.
misses here in the 10th. But that was not the final chapter that night or in that series. Shelby Miller leads it off. 4-2 Rangers lead tonight as we play in the bottom of the fifth inning. After that home run, current Texas Ranger Lance Berkman tied the game in the 10th. And then David Freeze had his moment, which will trail around after him for the rest of his life in the 11th. Miller is in the hole one and two. David on uh, Jay Leno. He was on oh, David he did Letterman. The tour. He did everything. Josh Hamilton, on the other hand, signed as a free agent with the Anaheim Angels and was moved to seventh in the yeah. order this week. I mean, it's getting bad. Man. Oh, it's really getting bad. You have to put a guy like Josh Hamilton, who was just a fixture in the number three spot for the Texas Rangers. And all kinds of numbers from the minute he got to Texas in the seventh spot for a team that's double digits out in the AL West. That's not good. Yeah, moved to the two hole by manager Mike Sosha. Mike telling us a couple of weeks ago that he put him in a new neighborhood hitting number two. Well, he's in a another new neighborhood hitting seventh in the order. He went from fourth to fifth to second. That didn't work in the order. And now seventh. Oh, and two the count on Matt Carpenter, who has a base hit one for two. He singled into center his last time up. And now he's jammed. That's Moreland. And that's two easy outs. And Martin Perez is giving Texas exactly what they needed here tonight. Once again, a 23 year old that broke his arm, the line drive back through the box, his left arm in spring training in mid March was slated to be the five starter that year and had to be obviously sent out. His arm healed. And then he had one appearance in a double header. Against the D backs in, in Phoenix earlier in the year. Strike one to Beltron. You saw the own your space pitcher profile brought to you by Avis. And Perez is two thirds of the way through this fifth inning. You can tell he knows what he's doing. And that, that presence is very, very important. Signed as a 16 year old. Born in Venezuela. Here's a fly ball into center that is caught. Nice sliding catch by Martin in center. And the Rangers are having fun here tonight, playing good defense. We've seen some of that on both sides. As we go to the sixth inning, Rangers will bat up two.
telecast presented by Ace Hardware is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Sixth inning now, and it will be Pruszynski, Moreland, and Murphy. A.J. has a two-run shot tonight. One for two. Fly to center is next time up. Takes one outside, ball one. Miller has struck out five. Allowed four runs on seven hits. No walks. Off the end of the bat into left center field. Carrying pretty well, but Robinson back in front of the track. One out. Krasinski's one for three. So A.J. back to the dugout. The batter will be Mitch Moreland. So this Texas team kicked it in the perfect time here in June. Losers of six straight, and then the A's came to town, and they won three of four. Trying to take the first two games of this series in St. Louis. All in all, though, it was a 4-11, and 11, rather 4-7, and 11-game homestand. But they beat the team they had to beat. They were one and six until they won that series. First pitch of ball to Moreland. But that Oakland A's team, they're not going anywhere. No, they are good, and Texas knows it. Maybe most upsetting for the Rangers is the one guy who was on the mound when they lost the game in that series was Darvish. And he's now one and four in his career against the team that's turned into their biggest threat in the AL West. Speaking of Oakland, Bartolo Colon won his 10th game of the year last night after having won only 10 all of last year. Here's a 3 0 pitch, it's outside, and that's the first walk handed out by Shelby Miller. There are the numbers for Bartolo Colon. So seven straight. He's won ten overall. And his ERA is under three. A couple of complete games for the big right-hander out in Oakland. No, Joe. We talked earlier about pitch count, and I told uh, uh, Shelby Miller a story about Doc Gooden. I told him uh, last night when Ken and I were talking to him. Doc Gooden went 24 and 4 in 1985 with a 1.54 earned run average, one of the best records in the history of the game. And the next spring, he came to spring training, and the talk by Davey Johnson and Mel Stottlemyre, the pitching coach, was about economizing his pitch count and getting quicker outs. That would be fine if the hitters cooperated, but major league hitters are not going to cooperate with a guy trying to keep his pitch count down meaning make earlier outs and and that bedeviled Doc Gooden for the rest of his career and he never had a year like 1985 he did that as a 20 year old by the way in 85 swing and a miss by Murphy in the count two and one well I mean what happened last year with the Washington Nationals in Strasburg, it's just not that easy. And, and you can do all you want and try and protect guys all you want. But when they shut down Strasburg, that team lacked a big piece of what made them so dangerous last year. And you don't just automatically go, oh, well, we'll save him for next year. Yeah, because we're, we're going to we'll be, be in back. The, we're we're going to be in the postseason for a lot of years. I'm really surprised and Mike Rizzo we talked about it last year talked about it this year the general manager of the of the Nats Mike Rizzo made a gutsy move Murphy pops it into left plenty of time for holiday to get there to up and I'm a little surprised that Mike Rizzo hasn't come into more fire and more criticism this year uh, because Steven Strasburg went on the DL again <laughs> right so I mean you know, the point is, when you have a chance to be in the postseason, you've got to run your best 25 out there. And if they get hurt, so be it. Ken Rosenthal is with us. I know, Ken, you will balance this out somehow. Go ahead. Well, the Cardinals do plan to have some kind of innings limit on Shelby Miller, but they're going to space him out. 
And they've got some off days coming up. They can give them an extra day's rest here or there. They can give them some additional rest at the All-Star break. And as Mike Matheny pointed out to us before the game, this is a kid who had three professional seasons coming into this season, threw 150 innings last year. So he has been built up nicely, and they feel that if they take care of him properly, they should have him deep into the postseason. Unlike with the Nationals, who just kept pitching Strasburg every fifth day, and eventually the clock ran out. Well, if those five every fifth day had been uh, later in the season and perhaps started him in the bullpen for six weeks or something like that to build up arm strength, I think everybody would have understood it. But after 159 innings of work to take him out against the Cardinals, I mean, he could have been a major factor against the Cardinals. And was it? One and one on Martin. Just made a nice sliding catch, and now he's got a base hit into center. And with two out, Moreland will stop at second. And it's two on for Martin Perez, the starter and the pitcher for the Texas Rangers. I, I and and think, yes, I yes, the clock ran out, but it was the clock that they put on this guy. Right, right, right. It was, that's exactly right. So, okay, the clock runs out, but but everybody's got these magical formulas now for how they want to just guide these pitchers in the early years of their careers, and I just I just don't think it's that easy. Well, prudent use of those pitch count uh, programs is fine. I don't think anybody would argue with the prudent look uh, at what organizations and pitchers are trying to do. But to say that one is the same for everybody is just wrong. It's flat out wrong. Two on, two out, the 0 1 pitch. Trying to bunt his way on, not a bad approach. He's been overmatched and safe at first to load the bases. So, a good idea by Martin Perez, and even though Miller had a chance to get the out, his throw pulled Craig off the bag, and it's an error on Shelby Miller. So, Martin Perez. Said, well, I struck out a couple of times. I couldn't hit him, so I'll try to bunt him. An easy play for Miller. A bit lackadaisical, lackadaisical but ends up pulling Carpenter off the bat. And Mike Matheny comes out of the dugout, and that error could bounce Shelby Miller out of this game. He's got Seth Maness in the bullpen, and it has. So instead of having the opportunity to get out of the top of the sixth inning and then see what happens in the bottom of the inning, a rookie who's eight and four commits the throwing error and it takes him out of the game. So with the bases loaded, two out, Seth Maness is coming in. He's been an out machine for the Cardinals. He's in a jam here in the sixth.
Seth Maness takes over with the bases loaded two out. Texas leading 4-2. Maness has been a big find for the Cardinals in their bullpen. Gets a lot of ground balls. Doesn't need the double play here. Trying to make a good pitch to get Kinsler. The count evens at a ball and a strike. Manus did not break camp with the Cardinals. Here's a ground ball left side and a nice pickup on a short hop by Freeze ends the inning. Manus comes in, does his usual work. A guy who's induced eight double plays tied for the most in baseball. Shelby Miller out of the ball game. 4-2 as we go to the bottom of the sixth in St. Louis. In Arizona, after Heath Bell blew the save in the top half of the ninth, Aroldis Chapman couldn't get a single out. Jason Kubel drives in two, and the Diamondbacks have won four straight. They walk off the Reds by a score of 4-3. to three. In Detroit, Max Scherzer strikes out six batters, doesn't walk anyone through seven innings, getting close to becoming the first pitcher to start a season 11-0 since Roger Clemens did it back in 1997. Let's get you back to St. Louis. Here's Joe Buck and Tim McCarver. Greg, thanks. Yeah, uh, that was your pick, Max Scherzer, for yeah. the AL Cy Young Award. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could uh, name any, uh, pull him out of the hat, but I just thought Max Scherzer, uh, that the, the maturity came together uh, with the physical ability, and it was going to be a big year for him, and so far it has been. Here's Matt Holliday in the hole 0 2. A couple of things. First of all, Scherzer's from this area, from St. Louis, and one of the real good guys oh, yeah. in the game. Detroit started the day with a three game lead over Cleveland and drives Holiday off the plate. Meanwhile, Arizona with their fourth straight win. They started the day two and a half games up on San Diego in the NL West. Here's a ground ball left side. Andrews gloves and throws one out. Holiday 0 for 3. Take a look at the Fox Sports 1 pitching comparison presented by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network, coming August 17th. There are the numbers for the two 22 year olds. And prior to uh, this year, the only thing to rave about in San Diego was a pitching comparison down there. But a lot of people uh, may have forgotten that the San Diego Padres this year under new ownership with Peter O'Malley 
and uh, relatives of Peter moving to San Diego, the former owner of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Alan Craig now took a ball. They're doing it right in San Diego thus far. So they're right in the thick of it in the NL West. Meanwhile, at the start of the day here on the 22nd of June, even the most avid baseball fan, if asked this question, I, I would bet more times than not would get the answer wrong. Cardinals have the best record in the major leagues right now. At the start of the day, which team had the second best record in all of baseball? Here's a 2-0 to Craig. Left side and Beltre makes the play. Boy, they're good over on the left side of the infield, two out. The Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates with the second best record in Major League Baseball at the start of this day, June 22nd. Last two years, they've been very good in the first half of the season, but yep. they've had a tough time in the second half. They are getting better. They are infusing a lot of that good young talent. Like feeling, Garrett Cole. Like Garrett Cole, who's 3 0. He won last night. He looks legit. They're going to stick around, I think, the second half of this year. I do too. First pitch a strike to Yadier Molina. Meanwhile, Will Myers, who was traded from the Kansas City organization to Tampa Bay, got his first home run today. It was a grand slam and a losing cause against the Yankees. And Zach Wheeler pitched with Matt Harvey. A dream day for the Mets and their fans, and they won both ends of a doubleheader against Atlanta. Traded to the Mets from the San Francisco Giants for Carlos Beltran. There's a pitch up and away, ball one. One and two, with two out, nobody on. And then, of course, uh, Carlos signing a two year deal as a free agent with the St. Louis Cardinals on the second year of that two year deal. Foul back. We're going to hear from Kenny either here in this sixth inning or in the seventh about Carlos Beltran, what he's meant to this community. And while the Cardinals have this hot shot outfield prospect, Oscar Tavares, getting ready at Triple A, I would think that the Cardinals will do what they can to try and bring Beltran back here for at least another year. We'll have to hear it in seventh. Striking out is Molina. Three strikeouts for Martin Perez, who's been outstanding. Pretty night. Downtown St. Louis after a lot of rain. 4 2 Texas after six.
All-Star Game coming up July 16th. City Field in New York. Being Queens for the All-Star Game here in 2013. You can go to MLBFanCave.com and pledge your NL or AL allegiance. And all of our coverage begins right here on Fox at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on that Tuesday night, July 16th. And you can vote 35 times, right? Is that the I th limit? I think that's right, yeah. Elvis Andrews is up on the count here, 2-0. and Seth Main is back for more work. He got out of a bases loaded jam in the top of the sixth. And here comes his 2-1 pitch. It misses 3-1. and one. Kevin Segrist, the left-hander who is, you can't say somebody literally has come out of nowhere, but I mean, he, he is a weapon. Not bad for a 1,235th round pick. Pick, not pick. round. Oh, oh, yeah, not round. I'm sorry. Pick. So there were 1,234 players signed before him or drafted before him. Yeah, that's right. And so he this something. Yeah, he throws, creeps into the mid-90s as a developing breaking ball. He's a good one. Full count on Elvis Andrews. Give you the AL voting leaders for the upcoming All Star game. Looks like this Trout in left, Adam Jones in center, Marcakis, his teammate with the Orioles in right. You see Cabrera, Hardy, they're voting a lot in Baltimore. Chris Davis, nobody's more deserving than him. Joe Maurer, the DH is David Ortiz. Andrews waits for another 3 2, and we'll see another one. If we showed the American League side, you got to show this. The NL voting leaders with Beltron, Harper, Upton, got off to that great start. Sandoval, Tulowitzki, who's hurt. Brandon Phillips, Joey Votto, and Buster Posey. Andrews flies to center, one out in the seventh. The one guy, and I'm sure we'll talk about this on July 16th, the one guy who surprises me with his consistency in either league is David Ortiz. I mean, how he can continue to come back. I mean, there, there were Boston writers and people around Boston saying he may be finished four or five years ago. Right. In back to back years. Yeah. He homered tonight. He's. Uh, as big a threat oh. as any DH in any lineup. And you said it the other day when we were doing a game at Fenway Park. Here's a one out cruise. Sounded like a foul tip. It was. And that's strike one. Pitch the road inside. Let's take another look. But you can make the argument. It was a foul tip. You can make the argument that David Ortiz is the best. I think so. DH in the history of the I DH. I think so. Edgar Martinez, of course, the probably the best hitter with the Seattle Mariners. But the combination of power, consistency, average, everything, I think it's got to go to David Ortiz. Here's he, a 2 1 to Cruz. Chopped up the middle, base hit. Nelson is red hot. Two out of four tonight. The DH, by the way, for those of you who forgot, first year was 1973. And the first American League DH was Ron uh, Bloomberg, Bloomberg, and then uh, Orlando Cepeda, who had a, a lot of people. I mean, here's a Hall of Famer, but he only DH for about a year and a half. MVP for the Cardinals here in 1967. One on, one out. What a hitter. He had to be to edge out the guy that was second in the MVP voting that year. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McCabe. On one out, Owen won the count on Adrian Beltre. One for three, doubled in the second, and then scored on the home run by Krasinski. This should be 
And it is. Double play. And Matt Carpenter, first year at second base. He doesn't look like it. He can turn a double play. Time to stretch in St. Louis. Rangers on the strength of two two-run home runs. Lead the Cardinals by two. Into the bottom of the seventh. What turns out to be a pretty night in St. Louis. To the bottom of the seventh inning, and that means David Freeze will lead it off. He fouls it away, strike one. Freeze is two for two. He has tripled and scored single. And he has had two of the best swings tonight against Martin Perez. 22 year old left hander who is dealing, and here is a fly ball into right. Good pitch in on the hands of Freeze, one out. When you when you can still get in on the hands of major league hitters your third time through the order then that means you've maintained the fastball Rangers loving what they see out of Perez remember coming into this game Rangers starters had won one game this month and that was a five inning effort as it was Came against the A's, and it was Justin Grimm on Wednesday. Here's a little fly ball into right. That will be caught by Nelson Cruz, who lost his footing and kept the arm and the glove up, made the catch, two out. Today's telecast sponsored by MasterCard, preferred card of Major League Baseball since 1997. By Bud Light, Lime, Limerita. Introducing new straw burrito. There for the summer of 2013, and this had to be an uneasy feeling for Cruz. It's great concentration to end up making the catch. Yeah, that was. Aided and abetted by those big outfielders' gloves. <laughs> that thing is uh, huge. It's not I mean, It's a cesta. <laughs> what they use in highlight. If Martin Perez got a kick out of it. This guy's having fun and as Tim said still throwing hard Pete Cosmo with two out nobody on Ty Wigginton is in the on deck circle he would bat for Manus if the inning gets there that's up to Cosmo maybe up to Perez the way he's pitching one ball one strike this game was over an hour delayed because of rain it was a serious thunderstorm that rolled through here and then a shower popped up 
right at what was supposed to be start time at 6.15, so we were an hour late, but we have zipped through seven. You're the eighth. Rangers batting up two. Now a Ranger Lance Berkman and for a while contemplated retirement he got a one year deal to be the DH for the Texas Rangers and trying to get his stroke back here's Segrist on the mound he takes over one pitch one broken bat one out AJ Krasinski one for four as Cosma took care of it there are a lot of good guys in the game too and Lance Berkman among the best. Quarter zone shot in his uh, right knee, and he will be available probably only for pinch hitting tonight, or the rest of tonight, and tomorrow when the Cardinals and Rangers play a night game here at Bush Stadium. Lance is 37 years old now, as Moreland takes a strike. This is Segrist. And he hides the ball extremely well. Guys just don't pick him up. And that's very unusual for a tall pitcher that throws well. Because most tall pitchers that throw well have leverage pitching downhill. And they don't need to hide the ball. But he does. He has a combination of power and deception. Former starter. So he is still learning how to work out of the bullpen. But the Cardinals... As Mike Matheny said, he was right under our nose in spring training. We've needed a left-handed presence in the bullpen to go with Randy Choate, their other left-handed. Choate's more of a specialist. Segrist is more of a doesn't matter who's at the plate. This That's guy right. Can pitch. Left-hander or right-hander. That's on the outside corner, and a breaking ball gets Moreland two out. This is this developing. Curveball, and when a guy throws that hard and is that tall, adjusting to the breaking ball is very, very difficult, as Moreland shows. Molina, good job of framing that pitch over the outside part. Here's David Murphy. But as far as Berkman's concerned, he's 37 years old now. He has had 
four operations on his right knee. Two last year. And his big power side has been his left-handed batting stroke. And he noticed that because that knee is not even close to 100%, he's not able to really stiffen that right leg. Straighten it out. That's exactly right. Here's a tap foul for strike two on David Murphy. And, and you're talking about leverage, when, when you're not able to straighten that leg out, you don't use the lower half of your body. You use only your hands. And Lance will be the first one to tell you that he can't hit that way. Look Very where, few people can. Look where he is on most career home runs by a switch hitter. Amazing. 3-6-6. Six, six. Mickey Mantle's number one, then Eddie Murray. Chipper Jones, Lance Bergman, and Carlos Beltran. Here's a 2-2. Reaching for it is Murphy, and that's about as quick and easy as they come. Segris does his job. Bottom of the eighth inning rolls in. Cardinals will send a pinch hitter, Carpenter, and Beltron down two. Hits it in the air to center. We will see you tomorrow night. That moment for David Freeze and the Cardinals wouldn't have been that moment if they don't come back the next night and win game seven. One of the proudest moments of my broadcasting career was sitting to Jack Buck's right in 1991 when he made the call and Kirby Puckett hit the game winning home run in the 10th inning of game six of the 91 season and then sitting next to you when you made the same call and uh, that was <laughs> you talk about goosebumps uh, it was the end of one of those interesting electrifying electrifying nights of baseball we've ever seen in our 18 years together in a booth. Well, Martin Perez went out there and warmed up. The Cardinals had Ty Wigginton announced as a pinch hitter. And now with the move to the right-hander Tanner Shepherds, Tanner takes over. John Jay will come off the bench. And just by sending his left-hander Martin Perez back out there. Ron Washington made Mike Matheny use a player that doesn't get the bat. That was a very shrewd move, and uh, I think uh, Ron outfoxed Mike Matheny there. 
And that's something you don't see that often. You have the pitcher go out there, the one hitter announced, and then they have to they have to change hitters. Only 82 pitches on the night for Perez. Jay's trying to say that pitch hit him. And he does not win that argument with the crew chief Gary Darling. Tanner Shepherds has great stuff. So that first pitch was 97. As Jay now is in the hole one and two. Shepherds is going to have to pitch well to match what Martin Perez did. Perez was supposed to be the number five starter, as you said, a couple times broke his forearm during spring training. As Jay fouls it off his front leg. He was good enough tonight. Forget about the number five stuff. If he's got that kind of stuff. Uh, I he, agree he with that. Hittable at Triple A, and they sent him back down. He could slide up in that rotation. He retired the last ten guys to face him tonight. Very impressive. Here's a one-two. Jay pops it up into left. Murphy is there. One up. Take a look at the Fox Sports One game summary presented by Fox Sports One, America's new sports network. Coming August 17th, Krasinski and Cruz with two run home runs each. And that's all the scoring for Texas. It's been great pitching on the Rangers side. Alan Craig with an RBI single in the first inning. Martin Perez with seven strong innings, two earned runs on five hits. We were delayed an hour, six minutes at the start. This game has zipped now into the bottom of the eighth inning. One out, nobody on for Matt Carpenter. Matt is one for three. A ball and a strike. Cardinals will need a new pitcher when they take the field in the ninth. Segrist went one inning with one strikeout. Here's a 1 1. Late swing by Carpenter at a 96 mile per hour fastball. It's one and two. That's a that's a great gauge. You know, it's not always a swing and a miss against a pitcher, but it's how many balls are fouled off the other way. We talked about it, uh, Perez, with many many outs the other way of those ten in a row that he retired before leaving the game. Carpenter checks his swing on ball two. Matt started this game seventh best in the National League, hitting 315. He's been very good in the leadoff spot. Number one position in the Cardinal lineup is on base percentage at 414. That's third best among leadoff hitters in baseball. That almost tailed back for the inside corner, and it's a full count. With one out, nobody on. Carpenter grounds one. Going to be a tough play for Kinsler. And a base hit. Infield hit for Matt Carpenter. He's two for four. Today's telecast presented by Ace Hardware is sponsored by Scott's, the official lawn care company of Major League Baseball. And by Chevrolet, find new roads. Okay, so Matt Carpenter breaking his bat and gets on base knowing that that had the aroma of an infield hit. <laughs> well, Carpenter can run. He's got a great swing and it might be in his future winning batting title in the National League with his team. Mike Matheny thinks so. Those who've watched him every day become so impressed with what he's been able to do. Blazik and Mujica, two right-handers getting loose. With Beltron at the plate, the tying run. One on, one out. Hard hit base hit. Into right, Carpenter takes the turn and heads to third. First and third, one out as Beltron has his second hit. I'll tell you, Joe, it's fashionable now to, for the first baseman to hold the runner on at first, regardless of the score. But when you're two runs down, you're playing for one out. You'll take two, but you want one out. And the fact that Moreland's holding the runner close as opposed to being behind him, that gives the alley open for Beltron, a good pull hitter, and 
now the Cardinals have runners on at first and third. And they have Holiday coming up. Matt walks in, and just like that, with Perez coming out of the ball game, the Cardinals have the go-ahead run at the plate. Person of Matt Holiday who's hit 11 home runs. Bullpen is quiet for the Rangers. This inning belongs to Shepard. That's bounced to third, might be two. Out at second and got them both. The inning is over as Holiday slams his helmet down. The double play ends the eighth. The Cardinals had a chance. Holiday bounces into a 5 4 3 double play. Frustration for St. Louis as they trail by two after eight. On Fox, presented by Ace Hardware. Some of the reactions after the end of the eighth, the frustration for Matt Holliday. The double play turn for Tanner Shepherds. And Ron Washington saying we had it all the way. He took his starter, Martin Perez, out, went to his bullpen. John Jay stays in the game in center. Shane Robinson is out for the rest of the night. That's where the pitcher will bat, and that pitcher, the seventh position, is making his major league debut, Michael Blazek. He came up earlier in the year, did not get into a game, and when the Cardinals shipped out Tyler Lyons, their starter from last night's game, they recalled Blazek. Here's his major league debut, and he may fall right in line with the rest of these kids the Cardinals have brought up that have been so impressive here in 2013. The AAA affiliate of the Cardinals, all Cardinal fans know that, but it's Memphis. And Memphis has been turning out one pitcher after another. Success in the major leagues. So the Cardinals have had the benefit of preparing young pitchers how to pitch in the major leagues and winning at the same time. And that's a very tough thing to do. Leonis Martin was fooled on this pitch. Look how far out in front he is. And
And the major league debut for Blazek starts with the strikeout. Ooh. That was filthy. With the curveball, it was. But you know, you, usually you develop in the minor leagues and you have to win in the major leagues. But when you can win and develop at the big league level, that's something special, and that's what the Cardinals have done all year. Here's Jerickson Profar who gets the chance to bat switch hitter. Middle infield type, ranked as the top prospect in the minor leagues. It's a big swing. Joe Nathan is getting loose. He'll come in and try and close it. As Profar is hitting 269. And he's now trying to learn the outfield. He got a lot of action when Ian Kinsler was on the disabled list. Kinsler is back. And Profar is learning every day from Gary Pettis. The third base coach for the Rangers and the outfield coach for Texas. And he says he's not ready yet. Taking ball as Profar way out in front. And it's 0-2. A hard thrower with that kind of breaking ball a downer curve. Pretty good combination. One inning for Tana Shepers with two hits. Rest all zeros. That's his pitching line. Here's the 0 2. 96 from Blazer. John Mosaloc, the Cardinal general manager. Is in I think the most enviable position. Of any general manager in baseball. Yeah, yeah. We talked about it in the open. Uh, the, the Cardinals with their young pitchers, pitchers, the envy of the game. The count's still 0 and 2. No question about it. He's got two guys in the minor leagues Michael Waka, who was their first round pick last year, and has already made his major league debut. Carlos Martinez, a young, hard throwing right hander who throws in the upper 90s, is down there. Those two guys are developing. Now he's got all these kids up here throwing 95 that are just coming out of the woodwork for the Cardinals, and they're finding guys that other teams are missing. Talk about a tribute to the scouting system, and, and Mo will tell you that. Here's a one two. Two out. 96 from Blazek with a nasty curveball. Here's why the Cardinals have been successful. They have the best record in Major League Baseball. The rookie pitchers 18 and 8. The starters ERA is the best in the Major Leagues. They have a 276 team average. They are deadly with two out and runners in scoring position. And they have the best record in baseball away from their home park. The two out nobody on. Here's Kinsler. Blazek certainly doesn't look like he is phased at all by pitching in the big league. I was thinking all of a sudden the Cardinals have run into a team that has arisen from the ashes, and that's the Texas Rangers. Winning four, away. winning four out of five, excuse me, Joe, uh, before coming into the night's action. And it happened at a good time for Ron Washington's club. The 1 1. Strike two. Mike Matheny is thinking, well, we may have another. <laughs> it's not that easy. Two and two. Elvis Andrews on deck. Top of the ninth inning. 4 2, the Rangers lead it. Here's a 2 2. That's to the right side. Craig makes the pickup, feeds Blazek for the out. And Michael Blazek gets applauded by his manager, Mike Matheny. That's his major league debut. A perfect ninth. Bottom half, cards batting down two.
to baseball night in America presented by Ace Hardware. As Joe Nathan takes over. Joe's really been pitching well. He's got saves in each of the last two games so he will try and make it three in a row. You see his ERA under two. As we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, it will be Alan Craig, Yadier Molina, David Freeze. It will not be easy for Joe Nathan. Three hundred twenty one career saves for Nathan. Strike one. Tonight, Alan Craig one for three. He tried to hold up, could not strike two. Guess just in case, getting work on the side. This ninth inning is Nathan's. Bounces one in there on two. Joe Nathan has put together a terrific career and he has a save percentage of 91 percent which is second among active pitchers since 2004 to Mariano Rivera who's still doing it for the Yankees. The one two. Two and two. Miss with the slider after missing with the split finger. Joe Nathan signing originally with the San Francisco Giants, and a big break came when he was traded to Minnesota. And then uh, perhaps even a, a bigger break signing with the Rangers. Here is his 2 2 pitch. Fouled back, and Craig had a big rip. The starter, Martin Perez, went seven, allowed two runs, five hits, struck out three, walked only one. And his only major league win came last year in his first start. Talking about Perez, came against Oakland. Big line for the win tonight. Count here is full. As the Cardinals will try and spoil it here in their last at bat. If you have to run it up there and put it on a tee. That's what you do. Do not walk the leadoff hitter when you have a two run lead in the ninth inning. Here is a 3 2. A strikeout starts the ninth. How about that? That was a pitch out of the strike zone, and Craig bit. Looked like a slider. A lot of pitchers have more confidence in throwing strikes with sliders than they do fastballs. Good pitch from Nathan. Now Yadier Molina. A rare hitless night so far for Molina. Who is number two in Major League Baseball with his average. Number one in the National League and he's 0 for 4. Left side it is Andrews with Beltre <laughs> playing around. He went for the deke. I did. He decoyed. So did the guy he, calling it. He decoyed both of us. <laughs> Here is our king play of the game brought to you by Burger King where taste is king and he's been king Nelson Cruz with a big week two run shot the difference that came in the third inning broke a 2 2 tie look at this <laughs> oh that's great I'll tell you you talk about a guy who loves to play actually both of those guys but Adrian Beltre you cannot get him out of the lineup fouled by freeze is Ken Rosenthal still down there I am what did you learn about Mr. Beltre over at third and his toughness well in spring training I had a talk with the Rangers trainer Jamie Reed and he said Beltre is as mentally tough as any player he has ever been around coming from Jamie Reed that meant something he was an assistant trainer with the Orioles from 89 to 96 and of course Cal Ripken was playing then so I said Jamie come on he's not as tough as Cal Ripken and he said you know what 
He's in that class. He's every bit in that class. Can't pay a higher compliment. No. No matter. Two out, nobody on. One one pitch. Freeze pops it up. Should end the night. Great pitching performance by the Rangers. Kinsler is there, and they win it 4 2. They've taken the first two games of this series. Perez gets the win. Shelby Miller the loss. And the save for Joe Nathan, number 24. He's got three in a row. Basically a two and a half hour game after a one hour delay at the start. We'll send it to Greg and Mitch in the MLB Network Studios.